Welcome to today's session. Um, as usual, we have a theme, and the theme for this session is about um, in anatomy, the upper part of our backs. Well, you know, parts of our body don't work independently, they all work together. So if your upper back is mobile and um, flexible, but also strong, then it will influence the organs beneath um, the chest, the heart and the lungs, um, and also our posture. And in fact, I went to a class yesterday, it's called a bar class, kind of like with a ballet bar, and we do various exercises that look a little bit like ballet. But a section of that class was dedicated to postural exercises. And almost all of those exercises were to do with strengthening the upper part of the back. So we see that as we get older, there's a tendency to have a stooped posture if we are at our computers a lot or at our devices that also influences our posture. So um, in today's session, we'll do some nice things for our posture and they have to do with the upper part of our back. So to that end, take a lying down position on your mat. Lie down on your back with your legs bent and your feet close to your buttocks. In the way of props for today, I have uh, a chair close by, um, a bolster, block, blankets, and belt, just the usual props. So let's start out just by a simple upper back exercise, which is a shoulder press. So if you have your arms by your side and both feet on the floor, feel your um, back body in contact with the ground. And then on alternate um, phases of your breath, press your shoulders back. So let's say exhale and press and inhale, release. A little pressure goes a long way. Your arms are straight by your side and your palms pressing down. So you might press your palms down as well. We'll do two more of these shoulder presses. Feel the front of your chest opening up very nicely. And then let that go. Let's connect with the breath through the uh, abdominal area. Rest your hands over your lower torso and inhale and fill the abdominal area with your inhalation. And exhale, release the breath. We go from inflating with the inhalation to deflating with the exhalation. And allow for a very gentle rocking through the pelvis. So it's a tilt and a tuck. Pelvic tilt, pelvic tuck. And then let's do the therapeutic movement, Apanasana. Bend your knees into your chest and rest your hands on the fronts of your knees and continue that pattern of breathing, if you will. Exhale and inhale with the movement of the legs. So exhale, thighs towards your abdomen. Inhale, push away. Arms are straight. 
as we go through these movements. The reason I said that uh, this is a therapeutic exercise is it's good for your digestive organs. It's good for the organs of elimination. Let's say, slip your hands around the backs of your legs, the backs of your thighs and your knees, and extend your legs up towards the ceiling. And then bend your knees towards your chest again. And let's alternate in that fashion from extension to flexion through the legs. So we get a little bit of a hamstring stretch. And what if we do just one leg? Keep the right leg up, extend the left leg along the floor. So straight left leg on the floor and right leg still up towards the ceiling. Link your hands around the back of the leg and alternately flex and extend through the ankle. So in anatomy, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion and very nice movement to kind of wake up your feet a little bit more, especially your ankles. So you draw your toes down, feel the back leg stretch. As you point your toes straight up, feel the front leg stretch. And let's swap over. If your hamstrings are a little bit reluctant to, to stretch, at this point in the session, then keep a little knee bend. But in any case, alternately working through the ankle. When you stretch the toes up, stretch from the bottom of the toes to the top of the toes. They're part of this exercise. And then finishing and both feet on the floor again, legs bent. Let's continue with a little bit more warm up for the legs and the hamstrings. It will serve us well as we go through the class. So grab your yoga strap, bend your right leg in and slip the belt over your right foot. This time when you extend the leg up towards the ceiling, you got a two-hand grip onto the belt, wind a little bit of it onto your hands, and then <clears throat> extend the left leg along the floor again, flex the left foot, and let's uh, just hold this um, leg stretch for the moment, the right leg extending up, and see if you can explore the stretch at the back of the knee. Not by locking your knee, but by um, tensing the quadricep at the front of the knee and just above it. And feel that front thigh muscle working and there's where you get the stretch at the back of the leg. Let's go out to the side. So take up the belt into your right hand. Extend the left arm out from your left shoulder along, along the floor and take the right leg right. Now wake up those abdominal muscles again and turn the belly muscles from right to left and keep the left leg, left side of your body firmly anchored. So take the right leg right, take a Good stretch through the uh, groin of the right leg. And then bring the right leg up and bend that leg and rest your right foot on the floor. Left foot slide it in. Bend your left knee into your chest, take up your belt onto your left foot. 
and then extend the right leg along the floor. Take a little time and bring more attention and stretch, if you can, to the back of the left knee, but by using the front thigh muscle, and especially just above the knee, and extending against the resistance of the belt, push up, heel up, and then let's go sideways and the leg out to the left side, right arm out to the right, and then feel the abdominal muscles turning, turning, turning towards the right side to keep the right side of your body anchored. Groin stretch, left leg, and then bring that leg up. Release, and two feet on the floor. Hold it there for windscreen wipers, uh, rotation or a twist. Step your feet wide, wider than your hips, as wide as your mat, possibly. Arms out to the side again, and then merely drop your knees to the right. Back up and to the left, and do this as much as possible with your breath. Your head rotates if that feels like a kind movement for your neck. Next time that you take your legs to the side, lift up the opposite side of the body a little bit so that shoulder blade lifts somewhat, and maybe the knees go a little nearer to the floor and then back to center. Other side, knees are to one side, but then that opposite shoulder blade can lift a little bit, the opposite hip. Try that on for one more time. So gradually we are working into the dorsal thoracic upper part of the back and through rotation. There's so many ways that we can do that. This time when you bring your knees over to the side, bring the opposite arm over and start to roll over onto that side, preparing to come all the way up to standing. Let's um, take a spot near to the wall and have, um, so we're on the same page, right side facing the wall, bring your right arm up the wall, and I've left a gap, probably about 10 centimeters gap between my right side and the wall. Extend that right arm well, while keeping the um, opposite shoulder relaxed. And then, we're about to move around a clock face and you might look at your right hand and move it back a little bit. So if we started at 12 o'clock, now we're at possibly one o'clock. Make sure that that movement feels um, something that your shoulder adapts well to. It shouldn't feel um, stressful or like you're wrenching your shoulder at all. If you can, bring your hand back a little bit further behind the line of the body. And often you know when you're on the limit of the range of movement, so be kind to your shoulder. And then let's bring that arm back up to 12 o'clock, and then forward in front of your body and down and ready to switch sides. But when your left side is facing the wall, take a little moment without jumping into extending your left arm overhead and just feel the effect on your right arm. Really good to stop and do these assessments along the way after you've done a strong stretch. And now left arm up and stretch it. And from 12 o'clock, we go back on the clock face and 
then a little distance, try it on, maybe just 11.30 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Release the right shoulder, let it drop. And if you can go any further, and this is one of the situations where one side can be so radically different than the other side. So I have less range of movement on my left side. So it takes a good deal of kindness not to push into it anymore. And then bring that arm all the way up and forward and back down to your side. And take this moment to consolidate and feel both arms. Let's slip in a balancing pose here um, because we can. So with your right side facing the wall, actually um, have a look at your feet, the beautiful feet. Lift and stretch your toes. Separate them as much as possible. Bring them back down to ground so that they do feel grounded. And then let's do a movement through the bones of your feet. So lift your right heel and slowly enough so that you feel, you do feel the bones of your toes and your feet and then lower the right heel down. Lift your right heel and come all the way up towards your toes. We're still on the right foot and lower back down. And you could say that we're articulating those bones of your feet. So you feel them a little bit more separately. And then swap it over and left heel. We'll go through just a few heel lifts like this very slowly. About 15 years ago, I had an operation where I had to be in hospital for six days and then in rehab to recover for 12 days. Go back to the first side and back to your right foot. And then when I was finally discharged from my recovery process, and I went down to our local beach and walked on the warm sand. It was summertime. I'm just alternating this movement for my feet. It was so beautiful. It was like a, I don't know, enlightenment experience just to feel the sand on the soles of my feet, the warm sand. All right, and then let's lift both heels at the same time. And lower down. Let's take a few breaths when you lift your heels this time. And stay up on the fall, all, <laughs> balls of your feet. And lower down. There's this problem about talking and balancing at the same time. And heels up. And sitting, standing tall and lower down. Good. And last time lifting. Keep your weight towards the inside of your feet, the balls of your feet, big toe base. And all the way down. I was quite reliant on the wall there while I was talking. And then just give your feet a bit of a shake out. You gave them a good workout and then give them a shake out. Then uh, a little bit more work for your arms in the way that they connect with the shoulders. Um, take a <clears throat> stance in Tadasana with your feet a little bit apart. And now you're uh, possibly feeling your whole of your footprint, right foot, left foot on the mat. In Tadasana, stay relaxed, tall through the whole of your spine, the back of your neck to the crown of your head, 
And as you extend your arms by your side, keep a little space between the upper arm, um, inside of the upper arm and the in the upper ribs. And then from here, bring the arms forward and up for Urdhva Hastasana, or a simple overhead arm stretch. And lengthen, incorporating the shoulder blades. So feel the shoulder blades on the outside of them and stretch up from there a little bit more. And then arms back down by your side. Interlock your hands. Turn them inside out. Straighten through the elbows as much as your body will allow at this juncture. And bring the arms up. And there's a little rotation here as you lift your thumbs higher and maybe your little fingers lower and stretch up. Soften the diaphragm ribs. I mean the ribs at the bottom of your rib cage, um, <clears throat> at the diaphragm area, and feel that kind of settle and soften into the upper abdomen. Lower your hands in front of you, change the interlock, re-stretch, push out through the center of your palms so you get a good knuckle stretch, and same thing with the arms overhead. Thumbs up little fingers down, straight elbows as you can, and still connect and be grounded through your feet, through your breath. Soften those front ribs. And then arms come down, release, shake out your fingers and your wrists. Let's do one more, which will influence the upper uh, back and the dorsal thoracic. I'm going to keep a belt nearby, maybe just over my shoulder, in case I want to use it for these gamakasana movements for my arms. <clears throat> gamakasana meaning cow's head. So from the side, left arm up and back, and bend that elbow, and place your hand on your upper part of your back. Right arm out to the right side. Roll your right shoulder forward. Turn your palm up towards the ceiling. I'm in a little bit of a forward bend as I reach that hand back. And work towards connecting my hands behind me. And on this side, sometimes we call them the good side and the bad side. So we'll just call this the side that connects. <laughs> and extending the arms um, away from each other. Left elbow up, right elbow down. And then soften and release. Let your arms hang free and swing free for a moment. And then bring right arm up and back. I've prepared well because I know this side well. And I'm going to bring my left arm out, back behind me, and catch the belt from behind so that I'm closer to connecting my hands. Interestingly, this is, there's so many ways that, that bodies present. Um, it's not that I have a stiff shoulder, it's my wrist is stiff on this side, so more difficult get the hands close to each other. And then standing tall, lift your chest, stretch the elbows away from each other, and then release, and let it all go. I'm going to move into, uh, we need a chair at this point, so grab whatever you use like that. And still keep your belt. I'm going to 
going to sit side saddle on the chair with um, my right side facing the back of the chair. So when you use chairs in yoga, uh, for the most part, it's good to have a chair that has a flat seat. We have some very comfy dining room chairs in our house, but they are kind of like um, a race car bucket seat, and that would not be suitable, but a flat seated chair is what you need. So I've got um, a belt, and I'm gonna put it around the top of the chair and bring it across my lap. It starts out at the top of the chair, I brought it across my lap, just dangling there. So working into a rotation for my spine, I need to start from a stable base. So that both feet on the floor, and feel your feet very well after doing the heel lifts, and the um, both sitting bones on the, on the chair. Then turn towards the back of the chair and bring your hands out to the top of the chair. We're going to get to the belt in a moment, but do your rotation so that as you're turning from left to right, your head turns, your shoulders turn, your upper back turns. Then from here, reach your right hand behind you and you're gonna take up that belt. So as you can see in my posture, I've got a good grip onto the belt so that I can open up my right shoulder. That's the main thing. Right shoulder comes back. I'm looking back over my right shoulder. And the collarbone's wide. Feel the right shoulder blade moving into the spine and the left shoulder blade moving wider. All right, let's go, uh, let's let go of that first side and then switch. So, Left side is facing the back of the chair. And let your belt rest over your lap. And turn a little bit towards the back of the chair. Two hands onto the top of the chair. And I'm going to bring my left arm behind me and take up the belt. When I finish up, my left hand is close to my right waist, where I'm holding the belt, and right hand onto the back of the chair. And then turning, as I keep saying, one side different than the other. And this would be the one that doesn't turn as easily as the uh, right side. Looking back over your shoulder, sitting tall, sitting pretty, left shoulder blade comes in closer to the spine, right shoulder blade wide, and then release it all and take the belt away, we're finished with it, and come up to standing. I'm going to move the chair in next to the wall. Grab a yoga block, a foam block. And the block goes onto the seat of the chair. I've moved around to the side of the chair and my right side is facing the wall. Standing close into the chair. Balance on your left leg, one-legged balance, and bring your right foot up onto the block on the seat of the chair. 
Once you've got that position, bring your left hand onto the outside of your right knee and your right hand onto the wall, a little above your shoulder height and a little bit out to the side. And then drill your left leg, left foot into the ground so that leg is um, standing tall and bring the front of the left thigh into the back of the leg without hyperextending your knee. And then your right hand on the wall, you can press it into the wall and use that as a way to help you turn from left to right, looking over your shoulder. That's our first go there. Let's switch sides. We'll have two rounds of the pose. It's working into it step by step. And left foot, sorry, uh, yes, left foot onto the chair. Step in nice and close to the chair. Make sure that you've done that. And then <clears throat> Bring your right hand onto the outside of the left knee. Bring your left hand onto the wall. Keep it a little distance away from you so that it helps you open up the, your chest on the left side. And then feel your standing leg and really stand tall in that leg. Move the left, uh, right thigh into the back of the leg. And then look around and see what you can see as you Rotate to the left. Your hand on the outside of the knee, not so much pulling your knee across the line of your body, but keeping it from dropping out. So it just stays, the left knee stays in front of the left hip. And lift your chest. All right, and round two. Let's come back to our original side, right side facing the wall. Step up. Right, left leg, your weight-bearing leg. When you bring your right hand onto the wall, lean over, so a slight forward bend over your right leg, and then lift up your left arm and hook your elbow on the outside of your right knee. So where your hand was initially, you've got your elbow. However, <clears throat> if your rotation doesn't allow for that, then go back to the first way and just have the flat of your left palm against your right knee. And that's your pose. Otherwise, you're a little bit tighter into the pose. There's more work for you to do with two hands onto the wall now. Lift your chest, open your chest, look up, look back. If you could imagine it, a little back bend for your upper part of your back, your dorsal thoracic. Let it all go and come around so your left side is in the wall and your right leg is your weight-bearing leg. Settle in. One side might be different than the other. Left hand onto the wall. Right arm lifted up. Lean over a little forward bend, but towards the left. And hook your elbow and see how that position goes for you. Two hands onto the wall. Using your left hand pressing into the wall to turn you from right to left. But then, um, one of my students used to say, this is where you're in a, a crunched pose. Come out of the crunch by lifting your breastbone. Beautiful. And then release and come off your props and put them to the side. And we're very, very well warmed up for um, some standing poses. So let's take up a spot on the mat in Tadasana. And 
like to think of Tadasana as being home base. So, as we were before, and feel those parts of the body that we've addressed so far. There's been attention to the upper part of the back in rotation. So feel your shoulder blades in particular. And even when you did um, the arm movements, that attention to the shoulder blades, and especially the outer shoulder blades, where they sit neatly onto your outer back ribs. Then step out wide for Trikonasana, and turn your feet to the right. Elevate your arms and extend them well out to the tips of your fingers. And then feel at this point that your weight is divided evenly, right foot, left foot. The extension of your arms is even, right arm, left arm. And then extend up towards the right side and bring your right hand down for Trikonasana and the left arm up towards the ceiling for triangle pose. Take this time to lengthen the spinal column right to the crown of your head. Lift your tailbone. Keep the top right thigh turning out and let the left hip and the left thigh soften forward and so there's an internal rotation there. And lift your tailbone. Feel into the upper part of your back and bring the lower shoulder blade, your right shoulder blade, forward. Inhale and come up. Turn your feet directly forward and turn them all the way to the left. Stable on both feet, extended equally through both arms. Lift your chest and then extend out to the left side. Feel your footing and left hand down, right arm up. Good. Pause right there. Turn the left thigh out, right at the top of the thigh. Let the right thigh hip soften slightly and that um, right leg is slightly internally rotated. Lift your tailbone. Bring your right uh, sorry, your lower shoulder blade forward. That's your left shoulder blade. And from there, inhale and come up. Turn your feet directly forward and come back to home base, Tadasana. Feel that little bit of space that you've created in the um, upper part of your arms between the inner arms and the inner the outer ribs just imagine that you're holding uh, like little mandarins between your upper arms and your chest and that connects you with the outer shoulder blades grab a block your phone block for Parsvakanasana and turn your feet to the right. Stack your block up. I'm using it today on the outside of my right foot, uh, more to my right shin on the high end. Extend your arms and take a knee bend on the right side. And do a, a couple of those knee bends. Kind of nice gliding movements. Then stretch your ribs over your right thigh. Reach out and bring your right hand down onto the block 
and your left arm up towards the ceiling. Take a pause there, consolidate, and then turn your left palm to the right side and bring your left arm overhead just above your left ear. And from here, move your right shoulder blade forward. Bring your right left ribs back. So working through the upper part of your body. And lifting up, take your block with you. Inhale and come up. And turn your feet directly forward and to the left side. Stack your block up where you want it, on the angle that you want it. And arms out wide to the side. Feel your stretch right to the finger pads and bend your left leg. Reach out over your left thigh. Bring your left hand down, your right arm up. Pause there. In consolidating, Feel back into your right leg, your strong footing through your right foot. And then from there, turn your right hand to the left side. Extend your right arm over your right ear. And holding it there, let's work the upper part of your back by bringing your left shoulder blade forward. Beautiful, inhale and come up. Take your block with you, place it in front of you and turn your feet directly forward. Step back, home base, Tadasana. Take a few breaths there. And for the last pose, Step out wide and possibly a little wider than you were before for Prasarita Padatanasana. Turn your feet a little bit in and then bring your hands at the crease of your legs for a slight forward bend. And then I've placed my block on the high end in front of me Take a pause and rest the heels of your hands on the top of your block. Adjust your hips here with the support of your arms, it's easy to do, and bring them slightly forward. Feel into your forefoot, but at the same time drill down through your heel bones. Then, using your upper back, bring your shoulder blades in towards the front of your chest and bring the front chest forward. Look out beyond your mat. Let's complete the pose. You're releasing your hands down to place them on the mat. If it's a bridge too far, then keep your hands up onto that height of the block. And from here, just check your footing again. Um, it's very easy for the toes to slip out wider. Lift your heels and bring your heels wider, a little bit wider than your little toes. And then let's complete, complete the pose with a forward fold position. So head down, buttocks up. Now there is a softening through the upper part of the back and the shoulder blades drop out wide as you relax into your forward bend. Take a little walk forward with your hands. <clears throat> We're gonna bring the feet in, heel, toe, heel, toe, and all the way rolling up to standing. Now I think we'd be remiss if we're focusing on opening up the upper back or strengthening the back or any of those um, notions if we didn't do a back bending movement. 
So let's warm up for that by taking up a bolster and once it's laid out on the mat I'm going to take a lying down position so to get there straddle the bolster one foot on each side have a seat in the middle of it and bring your hands back behind you to support you in rolling your back down I'd like for us to be able to settle into this with the upper back supported with the uh, block bolster between the shoulder blades and the shoulder is very near to the floor. So this is a safe movement for your um, lower back for the most part, I'll say if you have good support there for your lumbar. So the uh, bolster in the upper part of your back, not in the lumbar area. And then from here, my legs are still bent, feet on the floor, on either side of the bolster. And the arms can be loose overhead, if that feels nice for you, or like shavasana arms. And feel that um, position you've given your upper back support. And see if you can let go to that support. My head supported. The longer that I stayed here, which is just uh, probably a minute or two, uh, the nearer my shoulders have come to the floor. So it tells me that I am relaxing a bit, despite talking through the, all of this. Let's stay one more minute. Take advantage of the opening through the front of your chest and breathe into the front chest. Breathe into the topmost lung. We're going to exit from this little back bend that we've been on um, by pushing back towards the head side of the position and lowering down slowly. Get to the point where you can lift off the bolster and lower down all the way to the floor so the lower back and the buttocks are supported. Let's take this one step further into camel pose. So, come on up. And finished with that bolster for the time being. Let's see. Oh, maybe we're not finished with the bolster. So keep that near to you. I'll give you a sideways position of how you might warm up for doing camel pose. So in um, an up kneeling position, tuck your toes under. We're going to do a little back bend um, and minimize the impact of it by taking up the bolster on the backs of the legs. So the um, lower legs is uh, bolster supported onto the lower leg. So I'm well set up now. So the spine elongated. Bring your just your arms back and place them onto the tops of the bolster, the top of the bolster. Or what you might also do is keep your hands on the lower buttocks or the upper thighs. Even that small movement has given you a chest opening. 
what we're trying to avoid is taking the head back early on or overtaxing the lumbar spine. So feel the grounding through what's, it, what's connected with the ground is your um, knees, the um, toes, the uh, tops of the feet. From here, press your arms down, straighten your elbows, keep your um, upper arms tucked in towards your ribs, lift your chin, look up towards the ceiling without taking your head back. And then release. And I'm going to take away some of the propping. So if I take the bolster away, we might try one step and then the other. Bring your left hand back to the top of your left heel and lift your chest and then alternate and right hand down to your right heel, lift your chest, and then see if it's there for you, for you to reach your both hands out to your heels. If not, stay with the bolster. Switch on your glutes, your uh, buttock muscles, and draw your shoulder blades well into the front of your chest. It's as though the shoulder blades are helping you inflate the lungs, lift them up. Head comes back a little, but you're still looking up towards the ceiling. And then release and take a break and have a seat back onto your heels or sit on um, the foam block if that knee compression is too strong for you. Let's go one more round. Camel pose, Ustrasana, starting from up kneeling. I take the pose with my feet flat, but now you have those extra variations. So you can have a bolster over your legs with your feet perpendicular to the floor, or as I'm doing, taking that last step to complete the pose, reaching back to my heels. <laughs> Noticing this is affecting my voice. And then pump up your chest. Lift your breastplate high. And take your head back. Feel your shoulder blades. They move into the lungs at the front and into the center spine. And then lifting your head and lowering to sit back onto your heels or sitting on the bolster or from the back. Very well done. And then extend out your legs. And as a counterpose to what you've done, <clears throat> let's do a um, twist seated on your bolster. I'm going to keep my block nearby. When I do um, twists, my arms are kind of short, so um, sometimes I need to prop myself using a block so that it's easy for me to reach the ground with my hand, with my arm. Extend your legs out, seated in the middle of the bolster. And then bend your left leg in and slide your left heel all the way in, right up against the bolster. In this part, we're um, cupping, uh, clasping our hands around the front of the left knee, pulling a little bit so that we can sit up straight. As I said, I put my block handy so it's behind me, so I can rest my hand onto that block. Bring your right hand around the front of the left knee. Bring your left hand back and on the floor behind you, behind the bolster, or onto the block. Keep your um, right leg well extended. You did a version of this in the standing um, pose next to the wall, where you had your um, foot elevated onto the block on the chair. 
and now we're quite grounded. So the straight leg, straight out, straight at the knee, and pull a little bit onto the outside of the left knee and create more of a rotation, turning from right to left. Look back. It's a belly twist. And then because the theme is working with your dorsal thoracic, feel the left shoulder blade moving in towards the spine and the right shoulder blade wide out to the side. They're working completely differently. And then let that all go, release, and let's take the second side. <clears throat> and left leg straight and right leg bend. Go, rotating to the right, left hand on the outside of the right knee, and turning and sitting tall on your bolster, sitting pretty, look over your shoulder. Be mindful of your base, sitting on the sitting bones and the left leg well extended. All right, let's stay right here and save a little bit of time and energy and do a deeper twist on this side. So if, when we did this at the wall, if you lean over in a slight forward bend over your left, uh, right leg, lift up your left arm, extend it, and bring it, bring your elbow to the outside of your knee. If that doesn't suit your body at the moment, then keep uh, your original position and just hold on to the outside of the knee. And as we get into a bit of a crunch here, it's a little harder for me to speak when my diaphragm's getting quite twisted <laughs> in a good way. And then let's that, that side go and switch for the last side. And set yourself up well. And I believe it's the left leg that's bent and the right leg straight out. Reach yourself around and stretching around and forward bending over your left leg and hook your right elbow to the outside of the knee. And draw yourself up to your full height. The hand behind you, you can think of that arm and that hand being like a second spine. As you press down, you can lift up a little bit more. And then let it all go. And let's extend both legs into Dandasana. And we're moving towards the reflective part of the class. So let's take up what props we're going to use for Shavasana. The yoga relaxation. I'll keep my bolster for supporting my legs. And my blanket that I use as a pillow. I prepared well today and I actually have a eye covering. And it's pretty easy to get um, the use of a eye bag or eye pillow. Your personal eye covering, but a silk scarf or some soft cloth over your eyes works really well too. Why use them? People report that it helps them relax a little bit more quickly and effectively. 
a very personal thing, though. So once you've set yourself up for the yoga relaxation in a lying down position, we're not going to rush ourselves, but take the time that you need to make yourself optimally comfortable. So for me, if I lift my thumb, uh, buttocks a little bit, and lengthen my tailbone away, and even lift my upper part of my back, my dorsal thoracic, and settle my shoulder blades, so they feel they form a nice flat, um, like rectangle with the floor, no sharp edges. Is the first step in your ultimate relaxation. A good place to start is your weight of your body and sensing and feeling the weight of your body releasing to gravity. It feels like you're taking up a little bit more space where you lie on the floor. As the muscles release gripping. Muscles releasing any gripping of the bony structure of your body. and softening the physical senses of the body, a sense of vision, a sense of hearing, especially a sense of touch. So the senses become quiet, peaceful. And then, as always, there's the breath. and the opportunity to follow the breath cycles. Each breath taking you a little deeper, a little nearer, to your essential self. We're going to finish today's program in a seated position. So with the least disturbance possible. And only when you feel completely ready to do so, bend your legs in and roll onto your side and take several breaths there before you begin to come up.
Let's see, you're upright. Then take a position where you're able to sit on a folded blanket or your bolster. Find a seated position. The chair is still around if you wanted to sit on a chair for this. And once seated, then rest your hands onto your legs, palms downwards. Draw your elbows back into the side of your body. Lift and open the front of your chest. And feel, feel that your seat that you've put yourself in is comfortable. For a few minutes of attention to the breath. And to better do that, you might want to close your eyes. And over several cycles, allow your breath to deepen. So both on the inhalation and exhalation, effectively the breath a little more prolonged. If you're familiar with Ujjayi breathing, you might incorporate that slight constriction at the back of the throat that serves you on the inhalation and the exhalation for you to be able to listen to the sound of your breath. So a soft, audible breath. And to round off the attention that we've given to the upper part of the back, feel into that area of the back of your shoulders, and especially the shoulder blades. Inhalation, possibly a little bit more broadness in the upper back. On the exhalations, feel the outer edges of your shoulder blades firmly holding to the back ribs. Inhalation a little more opening through the front and the back chest. And exhalation, a little more firmness through the outer edges of your shoulder blades. Shoulders are down, relaxed. Facial features soft. Now, and finally, to complete our session, winding ourselves out of that breathing pattern, bring your hands up and place them center chest, the thumbs right in front of the breastbone. Lift your elbows a little bit. So we still say, stay um, in a tall and elongated spine and bow your head towards your hands. The message in this position and um, in the gesture that we make with our hands is one of respect for ourselves and for everybody. Namaste.